Hi, welcome to Excel Works video tutorials. In this video, I will discuss the differentiation function derive xy for computing the derivative at a point from discrete set of data points x and y vectors. Let's begin by looking at the help page for derive xy. Derive xy takes three required parameters a vector of x points, a vector of corresponding y points and the point of differentiation. It also takes three additional optional parameters. The order of the derivative, by default it computes the first derivative but you can compute up to a third derivative. It also takes a set of key value pairs for controlling the algorithm of the differentiation and a set of optional weights for differentiating the uh, discrete points. Generally this, the, all the points are given equal weights by default. Derive xy computes a derivative by fitting a spline curve to the uh, discrete points and then differentiating the curve. Let's look at some of the control parameters for the differentiation which are listed in the help page. Uh, they are defined as a set of key value pairs like all solvers in Excel lab. Some of the interesting uh, keys that you can use is the defining the initial slope and end slope at the uh, end of your discrete points, the beginning and end. Generally this information is not available but if you know something about the slope of the curve at the beginning of the data set that can significantly improve the accuracy of the differentiation. Uh, we are going to try some of these control parameters in an actual example in Excel so let me move directly to the example. The example we are going to do today is compare numerical derivative we compute using derive xy uh, to the analytical derivative for a, a function that I've defined here. I've already made the calculation to save some time but we are going to repeat some of it. So what I've done here first is I sampled this function uh, in two vectors x and y. I've defined a sequence x that goes from 0 to 4 then I sampled this function at these values of x so my function f of x is defined here as a formula and it's referencing a6 I've generated the same values by dragging, dragging on this box all the way down which basically evaluate, evaluate this formula for each corresponding value of x here I compute the exact derivative at the values of x as you can see here I have the uh, analytical derivative of f of x defined in this formula again I'm referencing a6 by using the autofill feature of Excel I can generate all the derivatives uh, the corresponding values of x from this exact analytical formula now I'm going to compute the same derivatives at the, sa at the x points using the uh, default settings for derive xy so all I have done here is define formula for derive xy passing the x data, y data and the point of differentiation which is a6 here so I've already named this vector x as x data and I've also named my y vector as y data and I'm referencing x data and y data and a6 the advantage of using names here is when I actually use the autofill to compute the rest of the derivatives Excel only increments a6 but leaves x data and y data intact we can actually do this calculation live again so I'm going to delete this vector and using this formula I'm going to drag on this little black box here all the way to row 22 and you see it computes that applies the same formula incrementing a only so now we have a7 a8 and so forth on column f I compute the error between the numerical derivative we computed using derive xy and the exact derivative for the non function as you can see the error is large at the endpoints but it's uh, fairly acceptable uh, in the middle we we have about uh, ranging from 1% to about 0.2% which is reasonable given that we have a coarse mesh here uh, so I'm going to show how we can take advantage of some of the control settings for the algorithm to improve the accuracy at the endpoints if we go back to the help page uh, you can see here we have the uh, initial slope and end slope 
that we can define to the derivative x the optional argument control. In this case, we know what the derivatives are because we have the analytical derivative for the function. So we know that at x equals 0, the derivative is 0, which is effectively what the slope is. And the same thing at x equals 4, the derivative is this value, which is what the slope is. So what I've done here is I've defined an array in Excel. Uh, my key is i slope and e slope, and I'm defining a value 0 for i slope, which is the slope from the non-analytical derivative, and also the end slope. Note that uh, my keys are string, but since I'm defining them in an array in Excel, I don't need to enclose them in quotes. Now I'm going to repeat the same calculation here, but now passing the known end slopes for the data set. Uh, it's the same formula here. Uh, note that I've skipped over argument number 4 because I'm computing the first derivative by default. I could as well also pass 1 here, and I'm also passing my key value pairs here as the optional key value pairs to specify the derivatives. So I'm going to compute this. Again, I'm using the autofill of Excel, so let me delete this and try it again. And Excel will only increment A6. It will not change any of the named variables. Excel recomputes the results. Uh, in column I, I recompute the error between the numerical calculation and the exact derivative. And as you can see, we have significant improvement in the accuracy near the endpoints. It's a little bit still high towards the end, 30% compared to 200%. Uh, but it uh, has improved significantly by specifying the end slopes at the endpoints. Of course, we have, we're working with a coarse mesh here. If we refine this mesh and use a, f a smaller increment, this accuracy will even improve better. This concludes this tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching, and you can check other video tutorials about numerical differentiation in Excel Lab.